Hey guys, and welcome back to Maya's Bug. In this episode, where this is going to be episode two of our rear shock installation, um, we're going to try to solve some of the ge geometry issues that are going on with these lower shock mounts, as well as fabricate our upper shock towers and get them mocked up and ready to install. Um, the, the thing that we're having trouble with right now that we need to solve is these two shock points, uh, they're very close for one, and I'm using two, two and a half inch diameter shocks. So whenever I install both of these, uh, it clears, but whenever I get the full droop, the pivot points of these two, they actually come together. And I'll put a diagram in here, right here. Um, you can see that they're, they're actually getting too close and they're getting close enough to where the coils are actually uh, hitting the bypass shock. So in order to solve that, I wanna take this lower shock mount out and I'm gonna move it back slightly and open this spacing up to five inches. Right now it's at four and a half. Um, and then I'm also going to bring this pivot point up. So once this pivot point is up, it's going to solve the uh, geometry issues and it's going to look more like this. So let's get started on that and uh, let's see where it ends up. The first thing I did was take my shock tower template and I transferred dimensions over to the computer and designed my upper shock tower. I decided to add an eighth inch overlay over the top of my 3 16th inch plate. I then transferred my model over to DuXF and cut it out on a laser cutter and poster board. Uh, this way I can just get a hands-on one-to-one -one view of the way it was going to look. After deciding I was happy with it, I then uploaded my models over to the Send Cut Send website and purchased my parts. These parts took about eight days from the time I ordered them to where they were on my doorstep. Once the parts showed up, I put them on the vehicle to make sure that they were matching uh, what I wanted them to do. I then DA sanded all the parts to get them ready for TIG welding. I make sure to clean the parts really well with alcohol or acetone in order to reduce the contamination. Then I mocked them up using inch and a half spacers for my shock spacing, then began the process of boxing them out. This is eighth inch thick, inch and a half wide mile steel. I was able to slowly bend it and tack it in place as I was moving along in the process. I then did the same exact thing to the other side. I then set the car back to a full bump, reinstalled my bypass shock, and did a quick check fit on my new shock tower. Once everything was good, I welded away for a couple hours. Now it was time to take care of the lower shock mount. Let's move it up. After I removed the old tabs, I created some templates in order to place the new shock position where I wanted it. Then I traced the parts on top of 316 inch steel 
and cut them out on my bandsaw. All right, so I've cut out my parts. Uh, I used the bandsaw and just a grinder to kind of get them to fit nicely. Um, so these are gonna go right here. Let's see if I can do this. About right there. And so now the new spread on these is five inches. Um, this was set and you can see the lift. Now they are uh, in line with each other instead of before this pivot point was way down here. So yeah, if you look at this other arm, you can see that's how it was before. And you know, now it's gonna be level. So I'm lifting this point up about two inches. So I'm gonna get this welded in, at least tacked in place, and then I'll be able to put the arm back onto the car and then I'll put the arm back into full bump and then I'll be able to start seeing how well my upper shock tower is gonna work. So let's do that. Okay, so with the new shock angle and the new lower tabs, uh, now we, at full droop, we are running parallel, which was, we were not doing before. Before these were way too close and the spring was actually touching up here. Um, so yeah, it looks a lot better. Um, I did have to change a couple things up here at the top shock tower. I had to cut this back a little bit to make it clear. Um, this 90 is getting pretty close up here to touching. It's not touching yet. But uh, I'll probably still cut a relief in here to make sure it doesn't contact. Um, but other than that, everything worked. Um, and I'm getting 17 inches of travel. So this is looking good. All right, guys. Well, that all worked out great. So what I did is I pulled this guy back off. Um, I'm adding some tubes in here. And then I'm going to weld these up and kind of add some more strength and aesthetics to it. Um, doing a little bit more cleanup around here and then final welding where these doubler plates exposed. Over here on the arm, all I've got to do is final weld it and then I'm going to add some boxing in here and tie it into the lower arm a lot better. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, all ready to go. I'm going to do all that off camera. But I want to thank you guys for joining me and following me along to the end. And uh, thank you for subscribing and liking this video. And if you guys have any comments, questions, uh, anything, actually you guys have been helping me out a lot with some of these uh, comments you guys have been dropping um, especially with these coils getting too close that was all you guys so uh, it kind of red flagged it for me I knew it was a problem but I knew I had to address it and here we are we got a whole video on it so thanks a lot and thanks for tagging along I'll catch you later